Good morning, Club 56ers. Glad to be uh, back with you, at least through video, even though we're not uh, physically together. But uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. Um, if you're new to our group, I would just want to welcome you. My name is Jerry Ferguson. I'll be giving uh, the message this morning for our Club 56 uh, class. Um, last week, uh, you guys were learning about um, how the Holy Spirit helps you to not be afraid, and we're going to continue to uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, before I forget, I did make a post about doing something creative at home. So if you're getting really bored, this gives you an idea of something you can do uh, to be fun. And uh, check out the post on the Summit uh, Facebook page, the Code 56 page, and uh, you'll see uh, the challenge for you, okay? So if you have any pictures, post them so we can see what you guys are doing. So let's get into today's topic. Uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, fear and worry. Um, the verses that we're going to be looking at, I'm going to give them to you if you guys want to get your Bibles out, get your uh, phone apps, and uh, tab these uh, verses. We're going to look through them uh, throughout the, the message. Uh, first one is going to be Isaiah uh, chapter 41, verses 9 through 10. After that, we'll look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. So if you guys are ready with the first one. Uh, now we're going to tackle fear first. And I use the word tackle on purpose. you got to tackle it. Okay, think of football. You're going to knock it down, take it out. All right. So the definition of fear is an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. So fear relates to a specific known threat. So right now, the obvious specific known threat that the whole world is talking about is the COVID-19 uh, virus. It's a specific known threat, but it's not the only thing that causes us fear. There's lots of things that people have a fear of, different things. I was thinking yesterday about Pastor James. Okay, I think the guy's, I love the guy, but I think he's crazy. He gets snakes, big snakes. They can bite you, kill you, but little spiders, he's afraid of. That's kind of weird to me, but hey, we're all afraid of different things. So I can't judge him on that. Now, when I tell you my story, you're going to think I'm a little bit weird too, but that's okay. That's right. I am weird. So when you, uh, I want you to think of something that does, um, does or in the past has made you feel fearful. Okay. So think of something like that. And I want you to think about how your body feels when you're in that state. Okay. You have a specific known threat. So. Some of the things that might happen to you, your palms might get sweaty, um, your stomach might feel queasy, whether it's a little bit, you know, you call nervousness, um, sometimes very, very upset to the point that people will throw up because of it. So there's a very physical reaction. Um, and other things, your body might shake, okay? You might see it in your hands or your whole body. It, it can become overwhelming and paralyzing for some people where now they can't act, they can't think clearly, all right? So I'll tell you a quick story. When I was young, probably about your age, more embarrassing, I could have been a lot older. <clears throat> I grew up in uh, the back house of a property we rented from my aunt and uncle. So <clears throat> being an only child, I was always at the front house, my cousin's house, playing with them. Well, when it would get dark, it's time to go home. I was afraid to go from their house to my house. It's like, 50 feet. It is not far. Okay. It's like from where I'm at right now in Club 56 to the youth room doors. Okay. It's very close, but it was dark and my imagination went wild. I thought there was like a million things out there that were going to get me. I don't even know what, like lions or something. We didn't even live near a zoo. So I don't know why I even thought lions, but lions are scary. They can eat you. Right? So not realistic, but you can see where my imagination started going and getting the best of me, right? My focus was on all these things. So what I would do is I would take a deep breath. I would open their door. There were two steps. I never used them. I just jumped right off, ran as fast as I could to my house. There were three big steps to get up to my house. It's raised. Never used them. I just jumped, flew right up to the door and opened it and ran right in. And then I was like, I was okay because I was inside. It's kind of like when you guys put your blankets or your sheets over your head, you're safe, right? False sense of security. But you feel good when you do it. So that's my story of something that um, just kind of controlled me when I was little, especially every time I was doing this all the time and every time I did it and I was fearful. 
Um, so just to show you, we all struggle with fear at some level. All of us do. Okay, so you're not alone if you're afraid at certain times or situations. Okay, so what does the Bible say about fear? That's what we're looking at today. So I want to want you to look at Isaiah uh, 41, 9 through 10. And we're going to read that together. Let's read it together like we do in class. All right, starting on verse 9. Ready, go. I took you from the ends of the earth. From the farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and you have not uh, and have not rejected you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now there's uh, four things that really stood out to me. Okay, I'm just going to repeat them to you. And you can look at them. I have chosen you. I am with you. I am your God. And I will strengthen you and help you. Okay. Very important. Very important to know. So the passage tells us what God has done. Okay. He's chosen you <laughs> before you were even born. It tells us what, um, that what he will do. He will strengthen you and help you. Okay. Now with that kind of a backup from God, why is it that we still feel fear at some times or in certain situations? You would think that it's eliminated, right? Okay, well, the passage tells us that our part is to not be afraid, okay? How do you do that? When I was running from my aunt's house to my house, you told me, just don't be afraid. It doesn't work, okay? At that time, it didn't work. So hopefully you're going to learn some of the, the, the tools that I've learned, okay, through the scriptures that help me to understand that I don't have to fear. All right, so <clears throat> things that hopefully will make it not so uh, scary anymore. All right, now the thing with fear is it seems to be a matter of focus. All right, Vo focus is going to be an important word that we look at. All right, so <clears throat> if you focus on the fact that God is with you, all right, the fear is going to start to fade away. All right, fear can always come up and it kind of reminds you, hey, something scary over here, but you don't have to focus on it, you don't have to pay attention to it, you focus on God. All right. So you remember that uh, the focus is on that God loves you, He cares for you, okay? He's present with you even if there's fear or uncertainty, uh, uncertainty, okay? And that He's not going to leave you and He's going to strengthen you. Now, how do I know that? How do I know that's true? Because that's what He says in His Word, in His Bible, okay? So I believe that and that's what I'm focusing on and that's what helps me not have fear, okay? So I want you to do an exercise with me, okay? So I want you to close your eyes. I won't close mine because I'm looking at you. <laughs> but close your eyes. I want you to think of something that um, in the past has made you fearful. Okay? And I want you to think of yourself standing in front of this uh, image or whatever makes you fearful. Um, you're probably picturing yourself uh, kind of small. And this fear uh, image is probably something uh, big like, um, very uh, overwhelming, very overbearing, okay? Kind of, it dominates over you. Now, I want you to add God to the picture in whatever way you want to see God. And it could be a, a giant light over you. It could be Jesus standing next to you, behind you, right in front of you, however you want to see God, okay? Now, the thing is, what happens when you see God in the picture? That fear goes away. Okay, that fear shrinks to like nothing because God's there. So when God's in the picture, then we know that the fear is not going to be there. They can't both be at the same uh, place at the same time. Okay, so God is greater than any fear um, that you'll have, and he's going to give you strength in whatever situation you're at. You just have to remember that God is with you, okay, for you to be able to uh, overcome that fear. All right. Too many times we forget God is with us. It's just us here on earth with things around us. It's like, no, God is with us wherever we're at, okay? All right, so <clears throat> focus on God means that you're looking intently with a sharp eye, okay? Think of the word, when you're trying to focus on some, something, you're really trying to see exactly what it is and details in it, okay? So keep your focus uh, on God and that fear when fear tries to raise its ugly head, as we say, okay, it's going to try to come up all the time, then you'll quickly squash it down, okay? It, it's going to come all the time, come at you, but you're going to squash it down. All right, so as soon as uh, fear comes to mind, 
Okay, remind yourself of what Isaiah 41, uh, 9 through 10 says, that God chose you, he's with you, okay, he is your God, and he will strengthen you, okay? So I challenge you guys to uh, either write it out, print it out, post it up, <clears throat> repeat this verse to yourself every day, and learn it so it can help you, okay? Once you really have it stuck in your mind, you're not going to have to think about it much, all right? You're just, it's going to come to your mind quickly. All right, now, I want to switch over and talk about worry. Okay, so the definition of worry is mental distress or agitation resulting from concern, usually for something impending or anticipated. So worry is when you focus on what could happen, what might happen in a negative way. <clears throat> so here's another story. When I was little, I was always worried about everything, okay? So let's say we were going somewhere. I wanted to know where are we going, who, who are we going with, how are we getting there. Um, I wanted to know, is it going to get food? What if I'm hungry? Okay, what kind of food are they going to have? What if I don't like the food? I was a really picky eater, so, you know, not having foods I can eat, I worried about. So, I want to know everything. If we're going to the park, what if I have to use the restroom? Do we have toilet paper? I know everybody's talking about toilet paper now, okay? Always had toilet paper, by the way. Never had to worry about it. So, <laughs> don't worry about it either. All right, so worrying used to occupy a lot of my time. Now, instead of putting all my brain, all my thought into all that worrying, I could have been more productive with what I was thinking or just enjoying myself, having more fun, all right? So, um, it's something I still work on, honestly, but I've gotten better at it. So, um, hopefully that you can use uh, the same tools uh, to help you. All right, now, I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Now, let's read what God has to say about worrying. A little bit longer passage, so let's read it together. Ready, go. All right, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? That part I thought was kind of funny. <laughs> See how the flowers uh, of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. Now, it's wise to plan for tomorrow and for the future. Okay, It's good to prepare for things. That's not what I'm talking about. Worry is when you dwell on things that can go wrong. Right? The definition says it creates mental distress and agitation resulting for, for, uh, from concern. So does that sound like what God wants for your life? Okay, Mental distress and agitation? No, that's not what he wants for you. So he doesn't want you to worry. Okay, That doesn't come from God. So know that God will take care of your needs just as he takes care of the birds and the flowers. Okay, Now, two things that I noticed that came right to mind as I was preparing for this. Um, Recently, I went to my uh, in-law's house, and <clears throat> across the street from the house, there's an empty field. It's been empty for over 30 years. There's no house built there, okay? So when we go, we always see this empty field, rocks, dirt, and weeds growing in there. Well, the other day we go, and literally right up to the front by the street, there's these beautiful, beautiful flowers growing, okay? They were pretty tall, about waist tall, my waist, and um, they had these bright yellow flowers, kind of looks sunflower-ish, okay, but more uh, uh, just natural growing. And not the, not the ones that you plant, see at the store, but smaller, beautiful flowers, okay? Nobody planted them, 
Nobody waters them. Nobody does anything. In fact, every once in a year, a tractor comes in and, and tills everything. Okay, but yet these flowers pop up again, and they're beautiful. Okay, God did that. I didn't do it. No one else did it. All right. Second thing I noticed was uh, a few mornings ago, I woke up. It was a nice, bright, sunny day in the morning, and I went out to my living room, looked outside, and there's some little birds, little sparrows, just hopping around on my front lawn by the plants and just eating and, and chirping away. Little plump, cute little birds. Okay, and they just don't have a care in the world. They, they weren't thinking last night. Oh no. Where am I going to get food? They just go out and they find it and they eat it. And God, God uh, provides it for them every day. Okay? So God just really wants us to know that we don't need to worry. All right? He takes care of those guys. He's going to take care of us too. Now, it's a beautiful thing when you can lay your head on the pillow at night. Okay? Now you tell the God who created everything that you see that you trust him. Okay? And you have no idea what tomorrow's going to bring. All right? But you know that he'll be there and he'll take care of you. All right, so again, it's a matter of focus. Where are you focusing your thoughts, okay? On the things that can bring worry or on God, the creator of everything who provides everything and will take care of you, okay? Seems pretty easy, okay? You just, but you have to practice it. So I wanna go to our next verse. Open your Bibles to Philippians chapter four, uh, verse six. And we'll read that together. All right, ready, go. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So next time you start worrying about something, I want you to remember this verse. It tells you how to deal with worry. Okay, so two steps. Number one, no matter what the situation is, don't be anxious, okay? Now, number two, with a thankful heart, and that's very important, okay? Because you're not focused on whatever you're worrying about. You're actually focused on all the things that God has done and provided for you. And you're thankful for that. Okay. That puts your heart and your mind in a good frame of mind of knowing that God provides for you. So you don't have to worry. All right. So with a thankful heart, pray and tell God what you need. All right. So come to him with thankfulness. Tell him what you need. He's going to provide for you. Okay. And that's it. Two things. Pretty easy. All right. So don't be anxious. Have a thankful heart. Pray to God, all right? So now, as I was preparing for the message, <clears throat> I was thinking of my dog, Roxy, okay? I think a lot of you have seen a picture of Roxy, and we'll try to post one on. So um, yesterday, I had been out for a little bit, and Roxy was inside with my family. And when I uh, came home, she immediately picks up her little squeaky ball, okay? It's her favorite toy inside the house, okay? A little squeaky ball. And she walks over to me. Now, at this time, I had been talking to my wife about, you know, how the day went. Um, so she comes over, and, I, and she's coming towards the kitchen where I am. And so I tell her, Roxy, go, go. I want her to go around, around the table, around the couch, over to her, her pillow where her area is so she can hang out. I'll, I'll go play with her in a little bit. But my wife's more important, so I want to talk to her. So I tell her. So I, I start talking with my wife, and of course I know what Roxy's gonna do, and she does it. She walks around the kitchen table and comes right back, and she's literally right up here to me. So I say, Roxy, go, go. So she walks. She did this like eight times. I'm not even once she tried to play a trick on me. She walked around the table, and then she went over here by a bedroom door where Noah was, and I heard her ball drop. So you think like, okay, she's gonna lay there and hang out with Noah. No, nah, she left the ball. She comes right over again. Okay, I'm telling you, eight, nine times she did this thing. She comes over, I'm like, go, I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay, the point of this is that she's very persistent, okay? She wants attention, she wants some love, she, she wants some, some hugs, and she's, she's gonna keep asking for it till she gets it, okay? Well, the thing is, you have to remind yourself that fear and worry are the same, okay? They're very persistent. When we, I said that they raise their ugly head, okay? They're gonna keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Your job is to keep reminding yourself not to focus on that, okay? Now, in other situations with Roxy, sometimes we leave a plate um, out there. there. There were some snacks or crumbs, and she comes and she wants to like start sniffing. She wants to go sniff around over there. And with her, usually what I'll do, I'll just kind of make a grunting noise. I go, ah, 
And that kind of means like no in dog language, right? <laughs> Get out of there. But again, she kind of keeps coming, right? Well, with her, that's what works, okay? And actually, I do the same thing with myself. So if I find my mind start, starting to wander to something of worry or fear, I actually do that to myself. Now, I, well, actually, I have gone uh, to myself. But usually I tell myself to stop it. I just say, hey, stop, stop. And I'm talking to myself. And what I'm doing is I'm catching myself, okay? So you guys, I want you to do something similar, whatever's gonna work for you. If you start to see your, your mind go there, I want you to catch yourself. I want you to capture that thought, okay? So that you can move and now focus on what God wants you to focus, okay? On Him. So that's very important to kind of cut that, cut that out and quickly change the focus to something else, which is God, all right? So I have a verse for you, and then we'll finish up in just a little bit. I want you guys to open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, okay? And I really like this verse. It's very powerful. All right, let's read together. Ready? Go. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Okay, a couple words that I highlighted. The first one was demolish. That means you're just going to obliterate, right? Like picture something that you're just smashing, turning to dust, all right? So that's what you're going to do to the thoughts of worry or fear, all right? Now, how do you do that? It says you're going to take them captive, okay? That means you're in control of them. They're your prisoner, okay? They're not controlling you, affecting you and in, in your life and where your thought is, okay? You're taking captive of them. You're controlling them, saying, I'm putting you over here. I'm focused on God. Okay, so take captive and um, every thought and make it obedient to Christ. In other words, that this is the truth over here. So the fear and worry, okay, I'm putting you aside because that's not true. Okay, truth is over here with God and that's what I'm going to focus on. All right, so very, very uh, powerful. Okay, and the thing is, you can do this. You have the power to do this. You have the Holy Spirit that can strengthen you to do this. And you guys know that. All right. So I hope that you guys will learn uh, these scriptures and use them uh, so you can be just like God created you to be, okay? In his image, okay, not having fear or worry and be able to just uh, be a better Christian, better person, better brother or sister, uh, um, citizen, better everything, all right? So uh, just want to wish you guys have a great, great rest of your day, rest of your week. Uh, let me pray for you guys, and I will see you later. Okay, let's pray. All right, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for uh, the time today. Thank you for your message, Lord, for your words of encouragement. And we just want to thank you, Lord, that you strengthen us. Lord, that you uh, just love us so much, Lord, that you take care of us, Lord, just like you do the birds and the flowers, Lord. And Lord, I just want to pray that you would help us to just keep these scriptures. Um, they're so important, Lord, that you would just help us to... Uh, memorize them to keep them on, in our minds and our hearts lord and lord as fear or worry um, wants to overtake us lord that you would just help us to quickly quickly put that aside lord and to remember to focus on you lord so give us that strength lord and um, lord help us to to help others in this time to be encouraging to them lord so we just thank you lord for all that you do and for loving us and we pray this in your name jesus amen bye guys